There's a prayer that Lonnie leads Greg in, and I work with Jonathan Rumi, who played the role of Lonnie, on this prayer, like how it sounds, how it would go, how you would actually lead a person to Christ in real life. And I think that moment in the film is so honest, it's so real, and I think there will be, hopefully, people in theaters praying that prayer along with Greg right before he's baptized. Hey, folks, welcome. You know how many times I've told you that I'm friends with the pastor, Greg Laurie? That's a lie. Greg Laurie has gone Hollywood. He won't even acknowledge me now. If you're not like Brad Pitt, he won't even he won't even look at you. He won't even take your calls. Uh, so we got somebody who looks a lot like him uh, to be on the program now because I wanted to talk to him about this exciting film. It's called Jesus Revolution. And uh, so Greg Laurie, I'm using air quotes, welcome to the program. Well, I'm a stunt double. You know, I've actually had people say, has anyone ever told you you look like Greg Laurie? And I've said, yes. First of all, he's an idiot. And they'll say, really? Oh, yeah, I've met him. He's so mean. I said, but actually, I'm a stunt double. So whenever you see Greg fall, that's me. They'll look at me quizzically <laughs> like, wait, what? That's yes. it. And that's another, that's another way we know Greg has gone Hollywood. He's got a stunt double. I'm in the, I'm in the process of getting a stunt double. Uh, that's for my, for my projected future in film. Uh, but I figured get a stunt double early. Now, listen, Greg, yeah. I joke with you because we are good friends and I love you. And I am yes. so proud of you for so much that you've done. But this film, which I, I watched, honestly, I mean, I've already watched, even though it's not out yet. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. And I know you've got to be very, very proud of it. So I want to ask you my first real question is, how did you... You know, when, when you entrust someone to make a film about your life and about a very, very important uh, part of American history, which is the Jesus Revolution, the Jesus Movement uh, of, you know, around 1970, um, how, where do you begin? Because it's so, you know and I know that there are a lot of films that are Christian-themed, that they're not up to the standard that we would expect yeah. from, from other films. So this film certainly is, but how do you how do you even begin a process like that? Because you've succeeded, and you know now that you've succeeded, I want to say, how did you start? Well, I, I started by working with someone that knows what they're doing, and John Irwin is a great director. Uh, his the first film I saw that he directed was called Woodlawn, a fantastic film. And then he went on to direct I Can Only Imagine, which was the most successful Christian movie, so-called, of all time. And then on to American Underdog and others. So he came to me with this idea, Greg, I want to make a movie about the Jesus movement. And someone told me you were there. We had just met. So we had a very long lunch. And uh, so he came back with his first draft of the screenplay. And he had built the movie around the story of my life as a young man searching for God, uh, along, I was being raised, well, raised, as I use that term loosely, by my alcoholic mother who had been married and divorced seven times. And so I was kind of almost the adult in that relationship because that part of my life then where I meet Kathy, so it's a beautiful love story. And then he also tells the story of two unlikely characters that came together, Pastor Chuck Smith, played by Kelsey Grammer, and Jonathan Rumi, who plays the role of Jesus, and the Chosen plays the role of evangelist Lonnie Frisbee. They come together, it's like nitro meets glycerin, <laughs> and there's this, you know, there's this explosion. Yeah. But what I think is really cool about this movie is it, to me, Eric, it, it's the most unchristian Christian movie I've ever seen. And I mean that as a compliment, because Christian movies tend to be lower quality. The acting performances often are not up to the standards they should be. And everything is tidy and perfect. And this movie, because it's based on a true story, has surprising twists and turns. And uh, But ultimately, it shows how God intervened in the lives of very flawed people and did a powerful work that many regard as the greatest spiritual awakening in American history. No, it is, uh, it is un unbelievable. And the car chase sequence with Chuck Colson. Oh my. That was <laughs> that was really something. Just Not just kidding. To film. Just kidding. Yes. Just kidding. No, but look, I mean, I did see, <laughs> I did see the film. Car chase scene with Chuck Colson. Co no, car, you would come up car with chase that. sequence with Chuck Colson. Sequence. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um uh no, honestly, uh there's a lot to praise about this film. Um 
I, I think perhaps um, at the center of it, because it's really, when, when you talk about the story of what happened, the Jesus revolution, what happened during the Jesus movement of the 60s, the 70s, what happened? What happened was Jesus was presented uh, not just in a new way, but it, yeah. it, in a way that is authentic, that he reaches yeah. out to the hippies. He reaches out. He is not a moralist yeah. who says, if you don't dress this way, don't come into my yeah. church. We all know that's dead, bad religion. We've seen it. Most people yeah. react to it negatively. And the fact of the matter is that's at the heart of, of the larger story, and it's at the heart of this movie. And that's why when you yeah. say that you have you know, this uh, essentially staid pastor, Chuck Smith, yeah. Open his heart and his church to this hippie guy named Lonnie huh. Frisbee. Yeah. That was true Christianity, and it 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 made all the rest happen. So so it's beautiful that you deal with that. You deal with the with the with the churchy side yeah. of the church and how there's this this rare moment when somebody makes the right decision and just innumerable people's lives uh, are changed. I have to ask you. Uh, maybe an obvious question, but what, what's your name again? No, less obvious. Greg. But my, my obvious question is, by getting Kelsey Grammer involved, how yeah. did you persuade someone? Uh, I mean, I can't think of a better comic actor in the world than Kelsey Grammer. Here yeah. he's playing it straight. But how did you get him involved? Because I would just assume he could do all kinds of stuff. Why he would can. he want to play this evangelist named Chuck Smith, how did that go, no. or can you even share about that? Yeah, I can actually, because I actually talked with Kelsey about it. We were on set shooting the film, and I was, you know, you have a lot of time where you wait for the next scene to be set up. And I said, Kelsey, why did you take this role? Uh, you're a very successful actor, you have a great career, and yet you take the role of a struggling pastor. What prompted you to do that? Kelsey is a very tender hearted man, and his eyes teared up, and he said, Well, I was at a point in my life where I wanted to do something that was meaningful. And in his words, he said, I was with some friends. We were meditating and talking about this. And I just opened myself up and I said, I want to do something that can help people and impact people's lives. He said, the next day, the script for Jesus Revolution came to me. And he says, I read it. And I said, this is it. Then I said to Kelsey, well, Kelsey, I think this was an answer to your prayer. He says, I agree. And, and he plays this role so beautifully. You know, Kelsey, we best know him playing the role of Fraser Crane, you know, on Cheers and then in his own show. But he was he went to Juilliard. He was trained as a Shakespearean actor. I didn't understand the bandwidth he had in his skills as an actor. But boy, you sure see them on display in this film with certain scenes where he shows Chuck kind of resistant and then he's sort of opening his hard up and he just does it without saying a word. It's like, wow. I remember when he filmed a particular scene where uh, Chuck, is, his home was invaded by the hippies. Lonnie has brought all these crazy hippie kids that are Christians to Chuck's home. Chuck comes out and he doesn't know what's happening. Lonnie says, listen to this song. And really what Chuck has seen is the birth of what we would call contemporary Christian music. And as Kelsey's playing this role, you see him kind of hard like this, I don't want this, to softening, to ending up in a big smile. He never says a word. His face says it all. That's one of the high moments of the film because Chuck, here's a man who's very conservative. He wasn't like a fan of rock music. He he left his comfort zone and, and allowed God to work and didn't get in the way of it. He opened his doors to a spiritual awakening. And, and you know, and there's other churches that kept their doors closed. And they didn't experience the Jesus movement, but Chuck opened his doors and it changed church history. Well, and you know, I just wanna be clear, when you say it changed church history, I know that my life was affected by what happened in California. In other words, uh, tons of people that I came to know, uh, I, I got saved, as we say, in 1988, and there were tons of people involved uh, in the churches that I was first involved in that came out of this movement. There's That's just right. no doubt that it changed America and that there's so many people in ministry today um, who yeah. came out of that movement, and it was, I mean, you know, if you lived through it, and I didn't really, but I got a taste of part of it, it is, um, you start realizing anything is possible when that, when, yes. when, when Jesus 
uh, comes into a culture in that way, when God yeah. decides to move in that way, or when, when we allow him to, we can't even yes. imagine what's going to uh, come out of it. I That's also right. have to say that um, Kelsey Grammer, the, the, again, the genius of his acting is you completely forget you're watching Kelsey Grammer. You're watching yeah, Chuck Smith. True. Yes, and there are a few true. scenes where you're just what you're so sucked in because it's yeah. the opposite of what it is to be, uh, you know, when you're a comic actor, you're kind of drawing attention to yourself and his eyes are bugging yeah. out and the nervousness and stuff that's gone. And yeah. it's completely subsumed in the character that he plays Chuck Smith, Correct. which frankly, when you have the abilities that, a, that, a, a Kelsey Grammer does, that's a, that's an act of tremendous humility to, to completely give yourself yeah over to the character. We're going to be right back, folks. I'm talking to my friend Greg Laurie, uh, who, uh, my goodness, uh, the film is uh, about his life and about what happened in America. It's called Jesus Revolution. Uh, it, it will be in theaters everywhere February 24th. You've got to see it, and we'll be right back. Folks, welcome back. I'm talking to my friend Greg Laurie. Uh, as you probably know, he's the uh, founding senior pastor of Harvest Christian fellowship and greg you're one of those friends it's just a handful in my life that as soon as you show up like i i get silly i i can't stop joking and laughing and so we've I'm had just, many I'm fun trying, moments together i'm trying to keep it straight <laughs> trying to keep it straight but <laughs> yeah. you um we're talking about the film jesus revolution this is a big yeah. deal this is it's based on a true story it's the story of your life it's the story of what happened mm -hmm. in california then across the country uh, and people can find out more at JesusRevolution.movie, JesusRevolution.movie. But so we mentioned, obviously, that uh, Kelsey Grammer stars in the film, but also yeah. um, Jonathan Rumi, whom yeah. many people know from The Chosen, yes. who plays, I believe, Thaddeus. No. I think it's Jesus. You think it's Jesus? Thaddeus. I always get Jesus and Thaddeus confused, you know? Is that just Do me? Do you? Is that just me? Okay. Probably. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the, 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 the big deal, yeah. Jonathan Rumi, is cast as Lonnie Frisbee, kind of the, the hippie, prophetic guy. Um, but you were just saying that uh, you you got personally uh, involved with, with Kelsey and uh, with Jonathan at a at a wacky Hollywood New Year's party. Am I making that up, or did, that, did this really happen? Well, it did happen. You know, we've all become friends, and um, Kelsey is the nicest guy. Because uh, I've been with him where people will recognize him and just come up and start talking to him. He's very gracious, always takes time for people. So, <laughs> excuse me, Kelsey says, Greg, would you like to come to my home for New Year's Eve for a New Year's Eve party? And I'm like, what? I mean, because, you know, I don't, I go to bed on New Year's Eve. I'm not out partying away. And uh, so he has a home up in uh, L.A. And uh, so we weren't sure if we would, but then we decided to. Uh, and then Jonathan Rumi was invited. And John Irwin, who directed the film, was invited. So Kelsey set up karaoke. But it was like a legit karaoke with the DJ and big speakers. And so I said, Jonathan, are you going to sing karaoke? And Jonathan says, I'm not much of a singer. I said, I'll tell you what, if you do it, I'll do it. Jonathan says, okay. Well, little did I know that Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus, has been practicing. And also I found out later, he used to be a lead singer in a rock band. So his moment comes, he gets up, he does the Bruce Springsteen song. Um, uh, uh, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, hey, baby, that, whatever that one right, is. Uh, right, right. Yeah, it's. He gets up there, he's got moves down, he's owning it. I'm going, oh, and I'm going up after this. This is and I picked the lamest song, Eric. You know, we both love music. We well, talk wait, about can, it. Can I guess? What? Muskrat love. <laughs> Come on. No. Did you No. By the way, when the Captain and Tennille, who you've told me many times was your favorite band of all time. Perform that in front of the Queen of England. Oh, stop. She you're kidding. It, no, 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 no. no, no. True. Now you're she joking. She found it offensive. It was offensive because it's very weird. Anyway. You, now, wait a second. Stop that. For, we have to be clear about when we're joking. Captain and Tennille, who are not my favorite band, but they did Muskrat <laughs> Love, they did not perform that in front of the Queen of England. At the White House, they performed it, and the Queen was offended by it. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm anyway. offended by the whole concept that they were invited to the White House with the Queen of England. Well, this was under uh, well, Jimmy it, Carter? Uh, probably would have been. I think it was Jimmy Carter. 
But anyway, back to the karaoke. No, no, part. no, no. So, Let's stay right here. We're, we can't <laughs> leave Muskrat Love. We're burning up time in Muskrat Love. No. All right. Well, look. I just can't believe you would share that with me. You're telling me and my audience that Jimmy Carter was was we know he was not you know he was he was no Ronald Reagan okay but but the idea that he invites the captain and Tennille of all the great bands in the seventies that he can invite in the Queen of England is there and he invites the captain and Tennille. I just want to say so back to the karaoke you've broken party at my Kelsey's heart. House. Yes, what so song did you up, sing? I sang. The song that my character Greg sings in the movie, Fly Me to the Moon. Wow. I don't like karaoke. I don't like karaoke. It never seems right. I mean, the pitch always seems wrong. It's up there, fly me to the moon. I thought, I'm bombing. I'm bombing because the guy who plays Jesus did too good of a job singing a Bruce Springsteen song. I'm bombing in front of Kelsey Grammer, and I hate this. I should have picked a Beatles song. I mean, you know what? And you are a big, big, big Beatles fan. I'm I a, am. I'm a Wings fan, even you more are. than a Beatles fan. I just say that to Which disturb weird. people, That's weird. just to annoy but people. But but let yeah. me but let me say, but I'm but I'm, I'm not a fan of the Plastic Ono band. Let me be very clear about that. No. But I do want to say that you. We've just lost the whole audience. There's no one listening anymore. Greg, <laughs> seriously, fly me to the moon. I sang that song. At a fundraiser in Santa Barbara, I kid you not. I'm not well, kidding you. Well, you sing well. Why don't you do it first right now? Go. I don't no. But uh, but I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And it's just kind of this great. Yeah, I, I'll do the first my version. I'll do the first line, and then you do yours. You pick up the next line. Ready? No. Here we go. We're in this. Fly me to the moon. You know, I, I just lost my voice let in that moment. Let me sail among the stars. Let me sail among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, In other words let's talk about the movie and stop singing. So the movie's The Jesus yes. Revolution. But you're, okay, you're not kidding. You went to a Hollywood party at Kelsey Grammer's house. Yeah. He's got a big setup there. And Jonathan Rumi, who we think of as a nice guy because he plays Jesus, stabs you in the back. Well, I by performing. Put it that way. Oh, I would. He is a nice guy. He just didn't let me know of his skill set. Because I actually said, Jonathan, if you do it, I'll do it. He's like, okay. I'm like, oh, please. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm. Over I'm just going to tell I, you something. I I'm going to get, I'm going to, no, no, no. Jonathan Rumi, I'm coming after you for what you did to my friend Greg. When we come back, when we come back, we're never going to talk about this again, but I'm coming after you, Jonathan Rumi. We'll be right back. I was trying to have a highbrow conversation about cinema, and my friend Greg Laurie dragged it down. Uh, to talk about the Captain and Tennille singing Muskrat Love in front of the Queen of England during the yes. Carter administration. And I, and I think the line that offended the Queen was they whirled and they twirled and they tangoed. Probably. Which was, is this kind of like a, it's a sexual muskrat thing. Rodents, that's what they do. Uh, that's how they reproduce. These are rodents. Oh but uh, anyway, let's get back to the film. Jesus Revolution... Uh, I really this has did. Been the weirdest and most surreal moment of any interview I've ever done, well, not just with that, you, that's my but goal. with anyone. That's my goal. That's my I'm goal. I'm dumbfounded by what <laughs> has just happened. Okay, I'm back. Let's go. That's 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 my goal. Uh, but but seriously, I mean, I want my audience to know. I saw the film and I just I, I was so happy that it was so good because it's such an important oh, story, uh, uh, Greg. It's such an important story, and. Uh, you know, it's it's very moving for me also to know, knowing you as I do now, thinking of you as someone who didn't have faith and, and was lost and, and so on and so forth. So I, I think it's going to give a lot of people hope. And I and I feel that it's it's the kind of a film we need films just like this. There's something there's we know that there's a, a brokenness in the culture. And so, look, I'm, I'm thrilled that John Irwin uh, did everything that he did. Uh, to make this happen. And so this is opening up in a lot of theaters on February 24th. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, it's going to open in at least 2,000 theaters. It could be as many as 3,000. So I'm really hoping that all the folks that are listening or watching right now would not only go see the movie, but that they would get an extra ticket and take someone that is not a believer. I believe this is an event, this movie, that could really move them Toward Christ, you know, there's something about watching art, watching a film, listening to a song. It disarms you. It opens you up. 
in many ways that, you know, a lecture or even a sermon will not do. And there's a place for all these things. But I think that people identify with these characters as they follow them on their journey. We see a very lost Greg Laurie, not knowing where to go in life, what to do, getting into drugs, making bad decisions, and ultimately coming to Christ. But he's very walled off emotionally. He's very closed. And I think Joel Courtney, who plays me in the movie, did a, an amazing job with a very subtle but powerful performance in showing what it was like for Greg to go through all of this. And um, so in Kathy's character, very fiery performance by a young actress named Anna Grace Barlow. And of course, we've talked about Kelsey and Jonathan and many other fine performances in addition. You get pulled into the story. And I don't think you're thinking about performances. I think you're no. watching it saying, what's going to happen next? And it is based on a true story. Hence, a lot of twists and turns and surprises in it, but ultimately a beautiful resolution. But at the halfway point of the film, literally at the one hour mark, it's a two hour film, Greg and Lonnie pray together. Yeah. And and there's a prayer that Lonnie leads Greg in. And I work with Jonathan Rumi, who played the role of Lonnie on this prayer, like how it sounds, how it would go, how you would actually lead a person to Christ in real life. And I think that moment in the film is so honest, it's so real, and I think there will be hopefully people in theaters praying that prayer along with Greg right before he's baptized. Well, listen, and then we have to talk about there's a great irony at the heart of the film because Joel Courtney, big deal, uh, and uh, the young woman who plays Kathy, I mean, both yeah. of them, they're not just big deal actors and great actors, but they're very, very uh, attractive and anybody who knows you knows that at that age, you and Kathy were very unattractive people. I think Kathy was very attractive. I'll go with what you said about me. I, I was all right. right. Maybe I was joking. Maybe I was joking. But actually, <laughs> they, no, they are terrific actors, very attractive. Yeah. The whole thing is just really winsome, and it does draw you in. But what I was going to say, one of the particular strengths of the film is that it doesn't, um, it's not hagiography. I mean, it shows Lonnie Frisbee to be a flawed individual. And I think yeah. that's so important that yeah. you see this person who has these amazing gifts. I mean, without him, would any of this have happened? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. And yet yeah. he was a human being. Uh, he, yeah. he, had, uh, he had his struggles. And I, the fact yeah. that the film was willing to go there I thought right. was brave, was honest. And it, it's part of what makes it a great film, frankly. And of course, you knew him. Yeah, I knew Lonnie. Lonnie was the guy preaching when I accepted Christ on my high school campus. Lonnie baptized me. So Lonnie fell away from the Lord uh, at some a number of years after God used him so powerfully in the Jesus movement. He got into drugs. He got into immorality. And tragically, he ended up getting the AIDS virus. And I went to visit him when he was in hospice care uh, in Newport Beach, uh, he was not long for this world. His face was emaciated. The effect of the AIDS virus had been devastating. Lonnie had repented of his sin. He had never lived as a gay man or lived as an immoral man uh, as his identity. It was something he fell into, he was sorry for, he repented of, and turned back to the Lord at the end of his life. So, you know, he's a controversial figure because of this. But look, if we read the Bible, Eric, God used a lot of flawed people. I mean, Samson was powerfully used by God and, and completely collapsed morally. After Noah built the ark and came safely to the shore, he intentionally uncovered himself and got drunk. And, and the list of flawed Bible characters goes on endlessly. So why do we expect people in real life to be perfect? But during this moment in time when Lonnie was so powerfully used of God, he was walking closely with the Lord. And it just shows that you can be used by God and blessed by God, and you can sin, but you can also repent and turn back to the Lord, and he will forgive you. Well, again, I mean, the movie doesn't go into that, but the point is it, it goes into yeah. his flawed uh, character uh, yeah. at that time. And I, yes. again, I think it's why this film uh, is as good as it is and why it will do yeah. well, because it's honest, and it deals with the fact that... Uh, yeah. There are people who who might be used powerfully by God who are are still screwed up and wounded and dealing with yeah. that and so on and so forth. Yes. And I think, again, that that's to me why this probably uh, 
signals, uh, you know, uh, a, a positive step in the evolution of so-called Christian film because yeah, this so. is really it's more Christian because it, it's it's more honest and and so yeah. on and so forth. But I really I just cannot tell you we're out of time. But I'm just so proud of you and Kathy and John Irwin mm -hmm. and everyone involved. Uh, it's the Jesus Revolution in theaters February 24th, and you can find out more at Jesus Revolution dot movie. My friend Greg, just thrilled for you. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Talk to you.